Thank you for joining us for the latest episode of the Secure Connections podcast. This channel focus series is brought to you by IOTSA, the Internet of Things Security Services Association. And as always, I'm your host, Brian Sherman, Content Director of IOTSA, and joining me today is Doug Hazelman, VP of Technical Marketing for Cloudberry Lab. Doug is a 20-year IT industry veteran who supports the MSP community, helping spread the message on secure data storage and getting feedback on products and services. CloudBerry Lab provides cloud-based backup and file management services for MSPs, small and mid-sized business customers. And I know I'm summarizing it, so I hope Doug will expand on that a little more for us today. Uh, Doug, welcome back to the Secure Connections podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brian. Great to be here again. Awesome. Um, so it's been a few months since our last podcast, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, about your more recent exploits and diving mm-hmm. into a topic that's kind of near and dear to the IOTA audience, uh, why service providers are becoming a security threat to their SMB clients. And uh, this is, a, I won't say a fun discussion, but it's one that's definitely worth pursuing, and um, we're going to continue to explore this uh, definitely 2019 and probably beyond as, yeah. as it grows. But so there's been a number of stories in the channel news over the past few months about MSPs being compromised by hackers and more recently, you know, ransomware attack. And, and we're hearing more and more about these, and which looks to be a trend. Why are MSPs increasingly being targeted by cyber criminals? Um, because they're an easy form of attack. Um, I, I, I was thinking earlier, it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to rob, if you're going to rob somebody or, you know, if you're a burglar, if you have keys to a single family home, you know, then you can go in and and do that pretty easily. But let's say you get the master key to an apartment complex of 200 apartments. Um, That's a much richer target. And I think that's kind of how MS, why MSPs are a target because they essentially have a master key into all of their customers infrastructures. So by just attacking that one MSP, they can now get into all of these different customers. And instead of demanding ransom from one, they can, you know, they can get demand ransom from, you know, 50 to 100 different clients. Uh, so it's a much richer uh, attack area. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I kind of think of MSP as being the Brinks truck, uh, mm-hmm. having having, <laughs> having everybody's money uh, yeah. in one way or another, but having access to everybody's network. If you want to knock that off more than hitting the 7-Eleven, I think it's going to be worthwhile. Exactly. So what are some of the biggest threats that uh, MSPs should be aware of and, and how has that been changing from what you've seen over the last year or so? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I think you know, part of the biggest threat is just that the attackers are, are getting wise to the fact that MSPs are out there and exist and they realize that they're, you know, they're ripe for, for an attack. So they, they kind of, you know, have focused some of their efforts on attacking MSPs specifically. So, you know, that's kind of the, that's kind of the first phase. And then, you know, the, the other area is now they're looking at what are the common tools and things that MSPs use and looking for ways to crack those um, in, in order to, you know, get into, like I said, the, you know, all the networks of, of the customers, the master key, so to speak. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's a never ending battle, you know, when we're talking about hackers and ransomware and all those types of things. So it, it's just as they, you know, they have now focused on, hey, we've got this this rich area where we can go target the managed service providers um, because they 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 manage multiple customers. Um, so they're they're increasing their efforts in trying to figure out how do I crack the tools that they use. Right, and I know for the most part, and the MSPs that I've worked with and you, and you talk to that are very serious about cybersecurity they continue to focus and it's much the same issue that their clients run into is, is no matter how diligent you can be, you have to keep each day tightening the vice on mm-hmm. cybersecurity and, and it's a never ending process. But um, even at, at our IO, it's a road shows. Uh, we have a penetration test that uh, demo that uh, mm-hmm. is done by Infogress. They do a really great job of this because they kind of go through all the areas of an MSP business where you need to make sure that not one of your employees is slipping and that's probably the the key part too it's not just the technology it's the social engineering and things that they're utilizing to to get the keys to the kingdom or find the passwords yeah and you know a lot of msps really focus on security for their customers and they need to make sure you know that it's kind of like the cobbler's children right (laughs) they need to make sure that they're focusing on their on their own um, probably even more than their customers. 
uh, just because you know they're more likely to be attacked than their customers are. So you know they need to be, they need to make sure that all of their employees are just aware of the social engineering tactics. Um, they need to make sure that they're running you know all of the latest and greatest security software that they recommend for their clients. They have to be using it as well themselves. Um, otherwise, you know why, why bother? And uh, I, there's another analogy, and I hate to just keep throwing analogies out each day, <laughs> but um, I, I, I live near quite a few small towns, and uh, the one pretty close to us, it was there was a story a couple of years ago where uh, they actually got robbed. If you think about it, is you know the police department's in charge of making sure everybody else is secure, and they forgot to lock their own door, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's just sad at that same respect, but they lost radio equipment, some other things, they broke into a few of their computers. And it's just the fact that who would ever think that? It's, it's, you're focusing outwards, like you mentioned, on your clients and mm-hmm. doing all the due diligence. And when you're busy, especially with MSPs, I know every day is not, I'm working eight to five. It's mm-hmm. what's the next challenge, what's your next problem, bringing on new clients. There's a whole host of things that, that you and and your employees are working on each day. It's so simple to just make one easy mistake. And, yeah. And that's the hard part. So um, let's switch to what agencies or, or media sources provide the specific threat warnings? What should MSPs be paying attention to to uh, try to keep up on the latest? Well, I think ever since, you know, I think the first warning came out in October of last year, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the U.S. government basically saying, hey, there's, you know, CISA, which is the cybersecurity infrastructure, um, you know, they, they basically said, hey, um, there are advanced persistent threats targeting IT service provider customers. Um, so, you know, the government is very aware of this. You know, they're, they're, they're putting out information in terms of, hey, you need to be aware of this. You need to do this. Um, there's also MSP alerts, um, you know, which, which kind of puts, puts out, you know, alert information, um, you know, based on some of these CISA warnings and, and other things that they're seeing, you know, going on within the industry. So, you know, you've, you've got to keep up on this stuff. You've got to pay attention. And, you know, I'm also going to say, you know, I, I think, you know, there are those areas, but you also need to look at what your vendors are putting out. Uh, if there's a patch or if there's, you know, a, a security warning from your vendor, you know, don't just ignore that email. Uh, you know, you need to you need to take these things seriously. And if there's a patch available, you need to make sure you apply it because it's probably there because they've identified some sort of issue. So, you know, it's it's multiple sources. You need to be aware of the threat, you know, which, you know, I think, um, you know, CISA, CISA has done a, a pretty good job of. Um, but then you also need to make sure that from your vendors that, you're keeping up to date in terms of everything that they're putting out. Um, otherwise, you're just going to leave yourself open for that attack. Very good advice. And I know um, you mentioned CISA, and they've even done some workshops uh, specifically for MSPs to help them understand some of the warning signs I know I've seen. I think they did in February. And from my understanding, I think they're going to do another round of those, although I mm-hmm. haven't gotten the updated part from the uh, website. But yeah, definitely a, a good agency to be following. And I think they even have a, a Twitter, too, for those that are, you know, more social <laughs> social media savvy and want to follow that. Um, it's not a bad thing, bad thing to watch for. But yeah. I know it's been in, you know, the news. And, and I've heard I've heard a couple of MSPs that are pessimistic on, on this front and saying, you know, there's been like one story, two stories where this has happened. And uh, the, the one thing I always try to emphasize is it's not. It's actually been an issue that's much larger for one thing, I don't think the federal government would make that big, especially Homeland Security, of, of a deal yeah. because they're seeing a pattern. It's just not being publicized every pattern. But there have been multiple reports over the last year, uh, not just like the uh, the one PSA that was compromised and the tools that you mentioned. And I won't specify which one because, honestly, if the patches you mentioned before have not been made, it could be any of the tools MSPs are using. Correct. But even you know, looking at, at Reddit, Reddit's got some excellent forums on this for uh, for providers that would like to check up on it and keep in track, and uh, just the regular channel news too. CRN, um, even Reuters uh, had a post on IBM and HP had a mm-hmm. compromise. So it's not even just the smaller MSPs, but any IT company is really being targeted right now that has access into into their customers or clients. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, kind of going back to the news, right? I think we, especially, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of, you know, the the target breach that happened several years ago. Yeah. Um, and that was through an IoT device that was the air conditioner controllers, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, so it's, you know, it's not just MSPs, it's, you know, anyone that's providing any type of internet connected service into these companies, you know, they're going to find ways to get in. That's an excellent point. So uh, I, I think we're just going to continue to see them, uh, cyber criminals in particular, especially the hacking groups and the nation states and others that are sponsoring this because it's, A, it, they're making money at it. Mm -hmm. or they wouldn't keep doing it. <laughs> Everybody's like, well, why, what do they have in for it? Well, they're, they're making billions and billions of dollars if you look at uh, any of the latest stories. So for every hundred that they send out, if they have one, it can be a very profitable uh, attack for them. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing too is there have been some decryptors that have been released. Um, so, you know, always, always understand that too, that if you do get hit, you know, see if you can figure out what it is. And, you know, there may be a decryptor um, that you can use that, you know, maybe a, uh, another vendor or security vendor has put out and they put it out there for free um, just so that you won't have to pay the ransom. Um, that's kind of one way to do it. It's not foolproof, obviously, because they, they change these things constantly. So, <laughs> Um, but you know, it's, it's something to consider is, you know, don't necessarily despair. If you do get hit, there, there are some ways to get out of it. Right. Right. It is bad news, but, uh, there is good news coming at least. So, mm -hmm. so how can MSPs best secure their infrastructure and their clients businesses, uh, which are obviously, you know, extension of that from these escalating and increasingly more complex attacks? Well, you know, first off, I'm, you know, I'm not going to recommend any particular security software because, you know, every <laughs> MSP event I go to, half the vendors are security related. Sure. Uh, so, you know, th there's just, there's research that you want to do there. Uh, but you definitely, you know, you want to look at the, the, the providers that are, <clears throat> you know, on top of things um, that, that have, you know, a team of experts that are constantly looking into these things and use that, you know, software or those mechanisms to make sure that yourself as well as your customers are protected. Uh, there's a, a, a host of solutions out there. Um, you know, I, I haven't not evaluated any of them. I'm not going to endorse any any particular one. Um, but you know, that's just kind of an obvious that you need to do that. And you know, if you've been running the same security software for the past 15 years and haven't updated it, then obviously you need to look. You know, need to take a look at, at what what is new out there because things have changed uh, significantly. <clears throat> and then, you know, the the other thing is you always have to assume that you're going to get attacked um, no matter how good the, you know, the security software that you have protecting your perimeter or, you know, or whatever, no matter how good it is, if they find a way in, they're going to get in. And, you know, I always, you know, obviously I work for Cloudberry, you know, the most important thing is to make sure that you have your data protected uh, because even if everything does get encrypted, as long as you have a backup that is, you know, secured off-site, air-gapped, all these types of things, um, then at least you can recover the data back um, in most instances. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's, it's always a twofold approach. Gotcha. So the, uh, and I know a layered, layered security protection is obviously the, uh, the industry standard everybody's moving to these days is, mm -hmm. is, um, you know, so many different protections put in place, everything from password management to uh, uh, making sure you have advanced firewalls. And, and there's just a whole host, as you mentioned, of, of proactive services that yeah. can be taken. Yeah, and, and a, a big part of that too is user training. Um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> because what happens, how, how, how often does it happen that someone gets an email, they click a link um, that they weren't supposed to, uh, but they don't know it because they don't understand how to identify you know, these, these different things. So, uh, and there's, you know, no amount of software can, can, can solve the, the end user training issue. And that's something that you need to be doing with your customers. Um, and with your employees, if you're an MSP on a continual constant basis, uh, cause you know, that's one of the easiest ways in is to click is to fool somebody into clicking a link. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. Cause I did this, uh, informal survey at our last event, um, asking mm -hmm. the MSPs that were in the audience, you know, how many are, are offering their clients awareness training? And I, I don't think there was, there was every hand in, in the room went up. We turned that around and asked the second question is how many of you are putting your own employees through this? And sheepishly, we probably got about half of the room to where they were actually using it themselves. Yeah. So when you talk to, you know, those that hadn't afterwards, many of them, you know, it's in the plans, but it goes back to that point of the cobbler shoes. Yep. <laughs> they, they haven't taken the time to do it or they haven't seen it as a high enough priority to implement it. And to your point is it's a priority. It should be done today. 
Because not everybody, even in a tech company, is tech savvy. No, definitely not. Um, and the other point, I mean, just yesterday, I got an email in that I had to double check. Uh, it came from DocuSign, of all things. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot, of, uh, a lot of contracts that I sign out. So I have two clients that use that in particular. I reached out to both of them to ask if they had sent me one because I wasn't expecting a contract to come in, mm -hmm. and neither one had. Yeah, so, and I sent it over to a friend who uh, decrypted. He's like, "Oh yeah, that was that's a a, a phishing, definitely a phishing yeah. attack." But it would look extremely legitimate. So no yeah. matter how how good you're looking, if I'd have just been not thinking and clicked on it, that probably would have compromised my computer right there. Yeah, and uh, you know I'm <clears throat> I'm the same way, and and especially with you know online bill notifications. You know, when I get an email saying, "Hey, your bill is due," I don't click the link from the email. I go to the website. <laughs> That's another easy way for them to get in. You know, that is an excellent best practice that uh, I, yeah. I don't think we talk about enough. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, there's so many things we do every day, even in the tech industry, is how many, you know, emails with links come in that we're mm -hmm. expecting. And it just takes one that has the perfect timing to nail you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the hard part. So, that's, uh, how do cloud services factor into the security equations for MSPs and their clients, Doug? Well, you know, that, that, that's kind of the that's kind of the next question because, you know, we, we talk about managed service providers being, you know, an easy attack surface to get into multiple customers. Cloud services, you know, are, are can also be viewed in the same way, um, but on a much, much larger scale. Uh, so, you know, you have to trust the provider that you're using. Um, but a lot of times, you know, what I also see happening is a customer will sign up for a cloud service, but they won't secure that cloud service in, in the way that they're supposed to. Um, they, may, they may leave public links open to some data or something like that, and people are continuously looking for those types of things. So even though it might be hosted on you know, this big major cloud provider, if you didn't set up your security correctly, then it's not their fault uh, because they have best practices on, on how to do things. Um, but if you're not doing that, then, you know, it's, it's no, no better than just, you know, putting it out there on the internet somewhere uh, with, with no protection. So you need to be very under, very wary or very diligent in terms of how you protect the data that you're putting into cloud services. Um, that being said, if you do that, and from a customer perspective, if you're sending their data to the cloud, as long as there's no persistent connection between the customer site and the cloud site, if the customer does get hit, in theory, the, the data that's in the cloud should be okay because it is essentially air-gapped. Um, you know, there, there's different ways to do that. Some data may or may not be, but like from backups, you know, you definitely want to back up to a, one, one area instead of the other um, and, and secure that data and make sure that there's no connection from the client site that, that's persistent up to that, that backup data you know, to kind of help protect yourself from that being encrypted as well. Makes sense. So, so for those that are not familiar with Cloudberry Lab, what is what is your company's role in that as far as from the MSP side? So we provide a, we provide a backup a platform. It's backup as a service, um, and it sends you know it backs up your customers' computers uh, from their site directly to the cloud. And you know it's the cloud of your choice. So again, not recommending any particular cloud platform because we support all the major ones. Um, but you know what that does is it gets that data offsite. And getting the data offsite is one of the most important things. Um, you know, it's fine to have back local backups. You know, there's, I'm not saying don't have local backups. You want that too. Uh, but getting that data offsite is extremely important, especially when we're talking about threats and, you know, malware and, and all these different types of things because it's one of the easiest ways to air gap that data. That makes sense. Now, with the uh, the continued move towards you know more flexible workspaces, remote workers, uh, you know, traveling, uh, employees traveling, which you know seems to be constant, where less mm -hmm. people are in the office. How, how is that making it complicated for uh, MSPs to do backup? Well, I, I you know every time <clears throat> it, it's it's uh, you know I, I see the threads in Reddit and and and, and Facebook groups and, and you know a number of other places is how do I secure a computer that you know, I didn't, I didn't provide or, or something like that. And that's a conundrum. Um, there is no easy solution. Uh, you know, if you, if, if they can bring their own device, um, you know, you need, and, and, you know, you need to be able to manage it and you need to write it into the contract that, you know, if you're bringing your own device, we still need to be able to manage it. We need to be able to control it. Um, because if, if they're not going to let you do that, 
then you know you can't necessarily be responsible. So it's 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 that another again that that attack vector. Uh, so you m- want to make sure that you're writing into your contracts that <clears throat> anything that's going to connect to back into you know the company um, has to be able to be secured and protected uh, by you as as the MSP. That makes sense. And, and I know when you have computers that are not necessarily online all the time too, that can be mm-hmm. a bit of a challenge, but making sure that yeah. they're backup uh, enabled on each of those computers. So when they do connect, uh, it backs up everything. Exactly. It, it doesn't, I don't think it happens as much anymore now that uh, we're pretty much connected everywhere. But, yeah. but to, to date myself, that was a, a bigger issue, you know, a few years ago than it is now. Yeah. And, and I think too, you know, well, every year, you know, it, you know, virtual desktop infrastructure, um, you know, hosted desktops, all those types of things. Um, you know, it's talked about, it's been talked about every year for the last more than 10 years. Uh, but, you know, with Microsoft, you know, having now, you know, starting to release their, their desktop as a service platform on Azure um, and, and some others, you know, it's, that's something to look into as well is, yeah, you can bring your own device, but the only way you're going to get into the network is to go into this, you know, hosted desktop and do your work from there. Uh, you know, it, again, it's just, it makes good security sense, you know, to, to kind of do that because now that infrastructure where they're connecting and they're using is actually controlled versus this laptop that they bring and might have who knows what running on it when they, when they connect to the network. Makes perfect sense. So what partner resources are available in a circling back to help MSP strengthen their defensive posture? I think we've touched on a couple of them, but are there any others? Um, you know, it's just, again, I think it's, it's talk to your vendors. <laughs> you know, don't, don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to reach out to them um, and, and ask them and, and, you know, make sure that, you know, if, if they send out security alerts in a specific format that, that you know what, you, know, you definitely know what that is. Um, and then the other thing is to, you know, when you go to an event, you know, that's, that's focused on MSPs or whatever, you know, talk to the different, talk to the vendors um, that are there. Um, there's, like I said, at least half of the vendors at any MSP event are going to be talking about security, if, if not more. Um, and, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of great resources out there um, that they provide. Some are free, um, but, you know, obviously they're going to want you to use their platform. Uh, so, so keep up to date on that. And then, you know, again, it's, it's very important to make sure from a backup perspective that you're, you're air gapping those things and you're keeping that data, you know, secured in an offsite location. So, and make sure that they're going back to our other point using uh, awareness training internally. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the other point is, uh, and I know this isn't done very often either is penetration testing on MSPs is, mm-hmm. uh, is I know there's quite a few experts now that are, are recommending, you know, make sure that you're doing that on a regular basis. Um, having a company that come in to do it, a third party that's uh, just going to be brutal. You, you want to know the naked truth now as opposed to having it exposed later when you and your clients have a ransomware attack that shut everything down. Exactly. That can be the, that can be the, uh, the very difficult part. And the dark mm-hmm. web services too. I know that's uh, another one that mm-hmm. at least proactively you can monitor and see what is, uh, what are the credentials may be floating out there in yeah. the dark web sphere. It's not a it's not a, a do all end all, but at the same point, you know those are all different different proactive steps to put in place to uh, prevent the the bad stuff from happening. So, how can um, our MSP audience learn more about Cloudberry Lab, Doug, and your partner program? Well, CloudberryLab.com is the starting point for for you know for all things Cloudberry, uh, but you know we have it. The, the, when you go to our website, you'll see backup and then you'll see manage backup and manage backup is really, you know, that's, that's our offering for managed service providers. That's the, you know, that's the backup as a service platform I talked about. Um, you can easily, you know, click and, and, and get signed up for it for a trial. Um, and you know, once you're, once you get signed up for the trial, then you get into the system. Um, you can click on the buy button. You can see all of our pricing options. You know, one of the things we have rolled out recently is we now do monthly billing by default, where we used to be annual. Um, I know that a lot of people used to hate that we did annual billing, so now we do monthly or annual. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Options. Um, yes, options. You know, we like to provide those. Um, and, you know, really, once you kind of get into that, once you get into the platform, um, there's, you know, a number of help articles and you can, you know, there's, there's, we have different white papers and things like that that you can read. Um, get help from, from any of our solution architects um, to really understand the platform and how to set it up best. Because 
you know, one of the things we understand is not all MSPs are necessarily experts in cloud infrastructure um, and how to set up the storage and how to secure it. So we, we try to provide resources um, and, and help along the way for you to do that to make sure you've got everything set up correctly. Very good. And I know your team's been a regular contributor too to the IOTSA blog. So I, mm -hmm. I definitely encourage our listeners to uh, check out the blog, uh, see what your team uh, insight you have to share. And then also uh, we we have the uh, the vendor partner page too, um, so they can go. Uh, it, obviously, it's easy just to go to Cloudberry Lab. But in addition, <laughs> they can they can go uh, check out uh, Cloudberry on on the IOTSA site as well. Yes. So, a any final thoughts before we sign off today, Doug? Uh, I you know I, I don't think so. I just you know it's it's just awareness, right? We we all need to be aware, and I and, and I know this topic comes up on security all the time, and people are tired of hearing of it hearing about it, but it's one of those things where we, we just have to keep talking about it um, to keep being aware because as soon as you kind of get lax in something is is when the bad things happen. So um, this may be a repeat of what we're talking about for a lot of people, but I still think it's an important message that uh, that we need to get out there and, and keep getting out there uh, to make sure that we, we keep ourselves as well as our customers' uh, data and infrastructure well protected. Yeah, those are great points, and, and I would have to uh... – say I, I don't think we can talk enough about this uh, yeah. this issue and, and we're already seeing some some um, changes in, in the forms of attack being placed so for iota we'll we'll make sure we dig into this a, a little deeper as we continue to go on and, and uh, keep bringing up the subject not just in yep. on the podcast but at our events it's uh, it's been a topic of great interest for the MSPs in attendance so we're going to make sure we keep providing resources for you so um, on behalf of IOTSA, I'd like to thank you for listening and encourage you to check out all the great channel-exclusive cybersecurity content on the association's website. That's IOTSSA.com. And if you're near the Central Ohio area May 11th, be sure to register for our IOTSA Cybersecurity Expo at Topgolf. The agenda and registration details for this event and our upcoming stops in Minneapolis, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia are on the website, so we'd love to see you there. Thanks again, and thanks to Doug for joining us today, and uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you.